Hi, guys. Welcome to the Chelsea Skidmore Show. I am here today with my guest, Sarah Weinshank, and shortly thereafter... We, I'm like writing as <laughs> if I was writing a script. Shortly thereafter, um, we will be joined by Gabby Lamb. Both ladies are comedians and friends. Sarah. Oh my God. So happy to be here. Do you like how I opened with an oh my God? I'm going to swallow my gum for your listeners. I threw mine out. Wait, you're going to swallow it? I don't fuck around. Do you swallow gum often? Not no. Not no. So you do? Yeah. You swallow gum? Yeah. Weren't you in middle school? Don't you know what happens? It sits in your di- digestive tract for like seven years. Seven years is the number, right, Mike? Still in it? We love Mike. That, that's made up. You, that is made up. Do you think so? But why do we all know it's seven years? We all grew because up in different places. Because you've been lied to by the same 13-year-old like and from middle school. How did he make it across the country? I'm from New York. You're His from L.A. He's from Wisconsin. She had a lot of boyfriends. It's like... Seven years. Was it seven years? Seven minutes in heaven. There's a lot of sevens growing up. Everything is done with seven. Seven deadly sin. Seven layer dip. (laughs) I'll riff all day on sevens, bitch. Seven Seven wonders of the world. Oh my God, Mike. Uh, you know seven what? days seven, of the week. Seven brides for seven brothers. Oh my God, that used to be my favorite movie as a kid. Wait, what is that? It's a musical. Seven brides for seven I know. brothers. Oh, when I was a kid, I used to watch like Gone with the Wind a lot and Seven Brides, Seven Brothers, whatever the fuck that was. I remember watching Pippi Longstocking. Oh my God, same. I have it on VHS. Iconic. Yeah. And then, um, you know what's so weird? The girl who I had, had on for my guest, uh, oh, from the Hollywood Complex. Remember when yeah, she yeah, popped up? Yeah, she was up? on there. Isn't that Pippi, odd? the original yeah. Pippi was I, on that. That was so unexpected. I was trying to fix the headphones for Gabby. I was like, this is the Pippi? That was weird. So Sarah, right before Gabby comes, she's running late from work. I wanted to quickly check in with you about one of our favorite subjects. Okay. Which is positivity, optimism, staying in the vortex, um, manifestation. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. All of these things. Sarah is a expert i'm not an expert and but let, and let's stay in <laughs> i'm a fucking expert and um yeah no so basically okay so how do we explain this to your listeners we follow we are disciples of abraham hicks <laughs> who we sound like we're in a cult which we are we're in a low-key cult and we love it and we love it what are some of the things that um okay well, you, you, first of all you're gonna be tuned in tapped and turned on yes you are okay so basically the underlying message of this is that our beliefs form our realities so basically it's about um thinking more positive in order to develop a more positive life that you want and so thoughts are energy totally and so at first I was a little bit resistant to this idea because it's like when you start to realize that potentially your (laughs) negative thinking could impact your reality it's like no yeah at first you're like no and then and then I um, was like, well, what's the worst thing that happened that could happen if I just start thinking more positive? The worst thing that happens is that I just start thinking more positive versus like I continue to live in like this negative space. Because like I was really negative. You were? Mm -hmm. I didn't know you when you were negative. Probably not. You've only been like a really positive person. I'm constantly checked around you. You you are? Oh, that's good. You don't check, but like I... When you are talking to someone who's positive, if you have the awareness of this and this is something you're working on, you'll be like, oh, shit. It's like you almost like hit a brick wall. Right. Because it's like you do feel better when you're around people who are more positive. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then when you're working on being positive and you're around someone who's negative and gossiping, it's shocking. Yeah, it totally is. It takes you. It rattles you. Right. It, it, it just fluffs you. Yeah. So I couldn't like, not come up with another one. Fluffs you. I that works. Yeah. I was thinking of, uh, you said, I was thinking razzles, but that's not the word. I was trying Razzle. to think of another R word, another R verb. Not it rattles you, but it razzle dazzle. It does not. So <laughs> razzle then I was like, dazzle. It fluffs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fluffs. It fluffs you up. Yeah. 
Yeah. It, it fluffs it, it just fluffs your feathers. It, it really ruffles. It ruffles your feathers. Maybe that's the word you're looking for. It ruffles them. And you're like, whoa, not cool. Um, so <laughs> it's like and it is like a daily practice. Yes. So we're both like in this uh frame of mind of trying to be more positive and constantly reaching for better thoughts and basically by changing our thoughts, hopefully changing our reality. And what did you do today? Today? What, what did what I do? you found yourself doing? Oh, today? On the street. What do you mean? Oh, t- talking to myself about how wonderful my life was. And then I r- was saying it out loud like a fucking full-on sociopath. And as I'm saying this, this woman just walks by and I'm like, oh. And what were you saying? I was like, it's, I'm so happy to be me. Yeah, I'm having a wonderful day. Everything yeah. is working out for me. Yeah, and it's like so obviously, because um, I don't want to come on and say like oh, this is the uh, this is the fix all. Just start reaching for better thoughts, whatever. But it's also like if you are someone who struggles with depression or anxiety, try it. And the worst thing that happens is that you just think better thoughts. Yeah, I recommended it to a friend today. She was, we were on a call. She was being negative. Okay. And I was like, hey, you need to listen to Abraham Hicks. I've had enough of you. Yeah. yeah. I, I told her. And yeah. then I, and she was like, who's that? And I sent her a link. I looked up just like thinking positively because you can. The great thing about Abraham Hicks is you can search. You search on YouTube. She has a billion videos and you can type in essentially what you want to work on. Right. So if you're like in a fight with your boyfriend or your wife or your husband or your friend, you can like look up like arguments, Abraham Hicks, and it'll just like reset your frame of mind because yeah human nature is that like things happen right so there's points of contrast so you could be thinking positively all day and then you get a flat tire and then what yeah so it's like like the uh, like so I was like um in a space where I was listening to her a lot last week I listened to her four days in a row and then I kind of dropped off when things were good you know I forgot that I had to do the maintenance and now I'm back on it um but I decided that I was gonna um I was like, oh, I'm going to do a 90 and 90 because I, I was feeling depressed two weeks ago. So I wanted to do things that would get me out of it. So, one so that's of them, 90 AA meetings in 90 yeah, days. Yeah, so um, a 90 and 90 is 90 meetings in 90 days. I'm switching between AA and Al-Anon. Okay. Um, but so once I decided I was going to be doing that, I um, the first two days in a row, I got like I thought I was going to be late to the meeting, but I arrived right on time and there was a parking spot right in front waiting for me two days in a row. I love that. And I, and that is like, just like everything is working out. You're just totally. in the flow where things just work out for you. I got like work calls in. I booked like a sketch on Bill Maher. Like I had like a great meeting. I you know totally. got an audition like in like three days. Like it was, Oh, and then I got like a great call, like about a work thing. And it, all these like things just got jam packed into a couple of days of me just working on my positivity. And I was really surprised at, and I, and the I have fast results. Yes, it was fast. Have, have, what has your experience? Have you had a fast result experiences? No, see for me, like I've had fast result experiences more now, but like, um, there was just like a period of time where I was like severely depressed. It was before I was on any type of antidepressant. I'm on Prozac now. Um, and I'm just telling that because like, I don't want it to seem like I'm just like this overly positive person with so much so that it's like unrelatable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've had struggle with having negative thoughts, being depressed, having anxiety, all Who of that. Who hasn't, honey? Totally. So I just want to be upfront about that because it's like, who's this positive cunt? You know what I mean? Um, it's attractive. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's attractive. It's suspicious at first when you meet someone who's a tra- who's, who's so a positive. positive. Yeah. And well, then okay. So my mom's really positive. So growing up, she was always like positive and light. My dad's more negative and he's like a lawyer that deals with like <laughs> the negative shit that pops up a lot. And I would say I lean more towards him than my mom. Um uh, my mom never says anything bad about people, but whatever. So when I was um in this really bad dark state of depression, uh my friend told me to listen to Abraham Hicks and basically um the whole idea behind it is like you start to think better thoughts and then your reality is shaped by the thoughts that you're having and there's a lot of science behind this it's like there's like you can look it up online like there's a bunch of universities that are studying this now about how our thoughts shape our reality and um yeah 
and it's like a few different people talk about it but so at the time I was really depressed I was about like nine years into stand-up wasn't really booking anything didn't wasn't having a lot of shows I had moved back to my parents house I was at the end of a breakup like severe depression um I applied because I thought I was gonna have to get a regular job I applied to like 20 jobs got rejected from all of them and like I had like a pretty like extensive resume and at the time I was just listening to so much of the stuff and I was just like okay well all I can do is just like keep trying to be positive keep trying to like hopefully something's gonna happen and I just started to have like this blind faith in something that was bigger than me like because I had no choice because it was like I'm out of options it's like I'm living at my parents house I've been doing stand-up this long nothing's happening I'm depressed because I just got out of a four-year relationship that ended very abruptly and now I'm just like who the fuck am I what is my life and I just started listening to positive things all the time um Abraham Hicks I listen to Marianne Williamson I listen to Ram Dass I listen to I mean just anything to Wayne get, Dyer Wayne Dyer anything Joe Dispenza yeah anything to get me out of like this deep dark depression um and around this time uh, nothing was happening and that's kind of what she says she says like you basically like sometimes it takes a while for the result to manifest but if you do the work it does manifest so just because you're not instantly seeing the results doesn't mean that like things aren't moving forward for you in that way that's so important to to hear and make a point of because you know like for me as an addict or I'm sure you know other people they need that like hit or they need to see that proof that something is happening so it's trusting in the space in between is like super important right so it's like I guess the way to explain it would be like um a pregnancy where it's like it's it's out there like you've put that out there and it just hasn't manifested yet you haven't gotten the baby bump yet yeah you haven't gotten the baby bump you haven't given birth so basically I start just like doing all this self-work and I'm like hiking every day I'm outside every day I'm like listening to the stuff every day and then out of nowhere I um I booked the Comedy Central series Shanks for Smoking and then that happens and then really ever since then um I've kind of like I really believe in this and I really think that it makes a big difference and I've seen results you've been on an upward upward spiral an upward Upward, spiral upward staircase and what will you be doing next week what will oh I'm gonna be on lights out with David Spade on Comedy Central so that's exciting on the 12th at um yeah look out for that I think Sorry, it's at 11 35 no um so what time does it air I think 11 35 okay so check Comedy out Central. Sarah on Lights Out she'll be on the panel but it's like all of this is like I mean looking at that and now looking at where you're at today and there's other exciting things as motion in motion as well for you yes. that we're not quite revealing yes but um it's incredible yeah it's and- incredible and also like um I will say that I remember specifically I did a podcast with Brody Stevens and I was in a really dark place and I was like really depressed and I needed a guest for my podcast and I knew that Brody would do it if he could and he came and he did it and he was really into like positivity and stuff and it was really interesting because um, he was talking to me about how a lot of times sports teams would bring him in to like give these like talks to the team about visualizations and po- and like this the positivity um, positivity and visualizations and like manifesting what you want and stuff like that um, and they're they're like I guess a lot of sports teams and stuff practice this too so that's like probably sitting and imagining the ball going into the basket sort of thing yeah like sitting and doing that and like um making the play like getting the pass doing whatever you have to do and like actually spending time doing that visualization um to create your reality and there is obviously value in this because these big big sports teams are paying somebody to come in and give talks about it like there's a science behind it it's not just made up um And so, yeah, that was interesting. And he actually told me that uh, when he was waiting um, for his Comedy Central series, he had visualized all of Enjoy It in the shower. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. So it was just, um, it was interesting to hear that from someone who I had looked up to that was like established in that way, you know, because like he was really big into positivity. Mm -hmm. So yeah tell me about like how you keep yourself going if it feels like you aren't quite pregnant with the results yet I think it's just like having 
I guess it's weird because it's like it's just having like faith in something greater than you. It doesn't necessarily need to be God. It doesn't need to be something like that because I think the word God throws people off. But I think it's just um, in like the universe, Mm -hmm. maybe. And what kind of like day to day things could people do to keep themselves in In that that, positive state? um, So make a list of everything you're grateful for. Gratitude list. Gratitude list. We love a gratitude list. Mm -hmm. Um, If you like checking in with yourself and like if you wake up and you're having an off day instead of like forcing yourself to do something that you don't want to do maybe like taking the day to like sit with yourself Mm. and not being afraid to cancel plans and not being afraid to not take action if you're not really sure the right action to take Mm -hmm. and just like sitting with yourself and waiting for more things to be revealed without like forcing it I Mm. guess I love that I heard um on a podcast recently someone said life isn't that complicated yeah and I just was like I just like needed to hear that because it's like we'll make things like everything is so hard everything is like this or that and it's like life isn't that complicated like everything is gonna work out right and it's like I wrote that next to my mirror in my bathroom I like that because I just like needed that reminder sometimes I need like you know sometimes you really need to like get that sticky note on the wall yeah to get you through totally of like because it we have a tendency as humans to make things more complicated for sure Mm -hmm. especially when it's like something we care about if it's like work or like I want to raise why don't I have a raise right now like I want to make this much money why don't I have this and like really focusing on what you do have versus what you don't have because the attention to the lack just creates more lack whereas like if you and say okay like here's proof that things are moving forward like small shit too like I remember like um like a year ago I really wanted a new shower head like I was poor and I had this shitty shower head did you want a rainfall shower head yeah I wanted yeah. the like a real shower head and it just would like drizzle out water and it was like and it looked gross you know when they get gross it's like yeah. I don't know if the shower head like a guy's could, come it's just like yeah if like the shower head could talk it just would be like help <laughs> like it didn't have yeah it was disgusting and like at the time I really I didn't have money for the shower head it was just like so I remember when I finally bought the shower head, the upgrade, I was so thankful for the shower head. And I was <laughs> and it was like and it seems so stupid, but I was like, no, the shower head has changed my life. I bought the shower head with my money and it's just proof that like if you like keep putting out positive things, like the things around you will change. Mm-hmm. And it seems stupid, but like actually like it wasn't it like meant so much to me that I ha- I was able to like change that and just yeah. was like okay like and I was so appreciative of it and it made such a big difference because the shower pressure was so much better and I just remember being like wow I'm so thankful for this new shower head and something so small but actually experiencing that gratitude made me feel like okay like now what what's the next shower head that I can switch into something better you know what I mean and I think something you mentioned that I was just listening to one of her videos last night on the way to work about focusing on um the positive stuff instead of the lack which I think is like so important to do and that was like kind of an aha moment for me um because you know I'll be like why don't I have this why don't I have this and I'll be ruminating on that and kind of like in a downward spiral about that um Instead of being like, oh, I have this. I'm so good at this. Like, change your thoughts to focusing on that. Like, makes such a big difference. Right. I mean, and also just, like, focusing on the fact that, like, we live in an infinite universe. So if we live in an infinite universe and there's infinite amounts of possibilities and we live in a place of abundance versus Mm -hmm. a place of lack. So it's like if you can... stop thinking about what you don't have and start focusing on what you do have more of what you want will show up it's Absolutely. just like the, the vibrational law it's like the quantum field whatever you want to call it that's just the way that it works yeah and then there's also something about eliminating certain negative words right do you you know not saying like why can't i if only like what like are, speaking in like absolutes like nothing ever works out for me like yeah that. it's so hard to get this it's so hard to get that um hey girl hey girl <laughs> gabby hi. just came in oh my God. Hi, we're in a spiritual conversation just so you can get into oh, um 
We're Thank you, Gabby about- Lamb, for joining. We're just Absolutely. we're talking about spirituality, manifesting. Are you into any of that? So much. Really? Very yes. Good. Very oh my god. Okay, so good. Too. So right now, what we were just talking about was like words of lack, like how you can't be like, if I only had the. Do you know about that kind of stuff? Sort of. So sort of. example, okay. like um. Two years ago, I really wanted to open for comics. All my other friends at the store, all the door guys, everyone would be opening for everyone. And I would ask people and everyone would just say no or not answer me. And I was like, it's so hard to get to open for people. And that was like my narrative two years ago. And I was, and that's just like how I like looked at things and uh, either I'm saying it to myself or everyone else out loud. No one will let me open them. No one will let me open them. So for some reason in like January of last year, I was like, I'm going to stop saying, I'm not, I'm going to stop saying that it's so hard. I don't, I'm going to try to make an energetic shift. And it was really like a simple thought. It wasn't like anything like that crazy underneath it like no I really have to it was just like a simple like I'm gonna stop acting like it's so hard and then I for some somehow it's not always this easy for me but I stopped thinking like that and I just like had a different energy and I was like oh can I open for you and they're like yeah and uh, I spent the entire last year opening every single month for so many people and it just like it just switched just like that and I was like oh it was just like the energy I had behind it it was like that negative like story I had been telling myself totally total shift in perspective tell us more gabby i am i'm like i'm getting into that right now too because like i just got fucking sober and now i'm like yeah having the whole like mindset shift swear to god dude yeah like, and have you sorry why do some, i feel like your mic some, isn't as is it do you feel like it's, it? now it's better right i think it's did good. you hear it wasn't as loud at first I don't know. It's good. Okay. That's I good. think. By the way, your eyelashes look incredible. Aren't they wild? I am they look so shimmer, good. Bitch, oh, that bitch. shimmer, bitch. I love it. Thank you. I know I'm obsessed. Yeah. Um, Do you listen to... We were talking about Abraham Hicks. Do you ever listen to her? No. What is that? Okay. <laughs> Sarah, Welcome you're the to master. the cult. <laughs> no, oh my God, um, I love it. I love it. No. Um, okay. So I got really into like this positive thinking shit. I guess it's not. Yeah, shit. it's basically yeah. <laughs> Come on, but Sarah, it works. It also, all of this shit works. It does. It Swear. it's basically just like the thoughts that you think create your reality. Yeah, essentially. so it's about like being mindful of your thoughts and reaching for better thoughts in every moment. Yeah. So it's like, and just a shift in perspective and how changing your perspective and what you put out changes what you receive back. I have been so cynical for so long, which is same. Been like, me so, too. Me too. And it's, and it's hard, especially like as a comic. It's kind of hard not to be. And you know, it's kind of cool if you are. It is <laughs> yeah. right. You're yeah. like, you're like, yeah, I hate myself. So what? So, <laughs> we so all like, do. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, this fucking asshole. Uh, yeah. They're not- yeah. Yeah, like, I could be I'm meaner funnier myself than, than them. You guys yeah. Can. <laughs> you. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. um, there is something about that, and like for me, working at the comedy store, like you know, a lot of the door guys for a while, all we did was talk shit about people until we eventually all started to get more things, and then we just kind of stopped. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. like you, you can like yeah. you know, hanging out like at a place like this, you could be like, they're not fucking funny. Why did they get that? Why did they? You know, well, and, in comedy in general, I feel like there's a lot of comparing and despair. Yeah. But you know? it's like what the fuck at the end of the day it's like what the fuck is the point of that like there's really no like why are we like pitting each other against each other when it's like it, it just it creates more negative energy in you and mm-hmm. like in your headspace and then it's like it keeps you down there vibrationally yeah, too like i really feel it you know and I, i've just been making such like a yeah. big effort to just not be like participating in gossip anymore yeah and sometimes it's hard like someone will say something and like you'll want to like part you know you'll want to be like yeah fuck that person but right. like even just like i try to just listen now and not say anything because the way that you feel afterward is never good. You're it's never not, like you're right. never like, "Well, I felt good now that I talk shit on that person who did nothing wrong to me." Yeah. And yeah. then you walk away thinking like, "Well, fuck, what if they heard that?" And like and then you start to feel bad and yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's messy. Talking shit is messy. But then there are the times where you're like, "I don't want to fucking vent about like what this Unless it's something that somebody directly does to you that like offends you, I feel like just sitting sitting around and talking shit is useless. And and mm. most of it, I feel like, is out of jealousy anyway. Oh, totally. Or just feeling like not enough, or like you didn't get something that someone else got. So it's like, and it's like, was I even right for that? No, right. no. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Where where were you? Uh, so yeah, you've had uh, you've been sober for thirty two days. And oh what, shit! Congrats. Oh. What made you get sober? Um. 
a t- it, honestly it was just like it was like a tumbleweed of a tumbleweed I, like a, that works a yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah, just it, kept growing it, it stuff kept <laughs> happening and like i just i guess really like the dui is what kind of like brought everything to my attention but even after i got the dui i was like i don't want to get fucking sober it's fine everybody gets duis it's cool and mm-hmm. a lot of people do but it just like kept coming up and i just kept getting sloppier and sadder mm. and mm-hmm. i just was sick of waking up like feeling like shit and i also like i'm not the kind of person who can like power I, like th- i think there are some people that are really good at being able to like drink and like can get their shit together but i am not that it's crazy right i'm yeah. not and once you realize that because i think like for me when i was er- er- getting sober um around when i was 26 it was really hard at first because i'd be like but everyone else is parting with me like the same way like uh, we're all going out and doing coke all night yeah but i was always like a little bit worse than everyone yeah yeah but it's also like you can't really compare yourself to other people in that sense too because it's not always going to be the same deal that's the thing with like that's also it took me so long for getting into aa because i would go to meetings before i really started taking it seriously and i'd just be like i don't like i'm not fucking like these people Mm -hmm. like i don't need to be here but when you heard people share did you relate to anything did anything like click with you yeah i mean all the time and then like (laughs) and then and then i had like sober friends who were like hey bitch you wouldn't be in these rooms if you didn't have a problem and i was like yeah right and then i kept ending up in the rooms and i was like wait a second well you had to go for your dui to get your like card signed but did you before that ever go i went to i was doing slaw yeah i did slaw too i was in slaw for a little bit yes sex and love addiction yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah, nobody (laughs) i've done that often uh, on over the years yeah and i was in it straight for like probably like two years yeah man my thing it actually yeah what were you gonna say <laughs> no my therapist kept being like you need to like do all of it you need to be in da slaw AA. Yeah. and i was like no bitch i fucking don't yeah <laughs> it, um, slaw actually really did help me um yeah. like at the time when i needed it because i had been in all toxic relationships for 10 years yeah so um you know a lot of push the 20s yeah, yeah right. it's the full 20s. of toxic relationships it's all like you know push pull hot cold so i get in the, so much hot cold those were the only relationships Are we fucking I ever not you know? yeah oh but God. also like will do you, you like me? me or not will you love me yeah no, and nobody ever loves me and now I'm yeah. like, no, <laughs> i know because i don't fucking care about myself oh my god and i did a lot of work on that yeah um so much so work. yeah have you guys done like work on rebuilding and like learning to love yourself so and like let's I'm just get right like now. Yeah, let's just, you know, um, what kind of exercises have you been told to do? Um, I mean, God, dude, I'm literally, I'm like 32 days into like figuring out how to care about myself. Yeah. Like, literally up until I got sober, I, I don't fucking, I haven't, what, I have just been treating myself like shit for my entire life and like having low self-esteem and talking shit to myself. So now it's like, for, I don't, like little tiny practices of like, you know, like the journaling. Yeah. And now that like I have a sponsor, like just doing like the gratitude lists and then like lighting some fucking palo santo <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah yeah, yeah. Like, which i did on monday go on yeah and i like, yeah. try to do that every morning and every night and I do oh the, that's nice every morning and night every we love a ritual night. bitch Ooh, i'm trying to yeah. get into them i, know. <laughs> yeah. I, I do never too never thought i would be like like literally like even a few months ago if you would have fucking told me that i would be like going through this program and like getting sober there's n- i would not have fucking believed it there's no way because I am such a cynical bitch. I was like, fuck me too. that does this stuff. Me too. Here we are. You know what really Slaw helped me with was I had a really big problem with posting a lot of slutty photos. <laughs> like I, I can't would... even talk about this because I just posted like four. But yours, yours are, are not. Slutty. You're they not are? a whore. No. Oh, thank you. you no, you're, not, <laughs> you're not a slutty person. I was literally post- posting <laughs> escort level lingerie photo shoots. Like, okay okay like you're like pin up and cute like yeah, it's different yeah okay different vibe. okay, yeah, but it's <laughs> okay. Like, but you're like i wasn't even like working on comedy that hard i was just literally posting photos of me and my lingerie yeah. like it was just sad yeah so it, it, <laughs> but it was more of like i also like really just wanted validation so it helped me like kind of pull away from that and yeah. now i like think like i now i really overthink stuff that i like post and i'm i'm really uncomfortable posting like any sort of like sexual stuff on my instagram but not me i'm trying to get more no um <laughs> it's only because of all my past stuff though yeah. it's only because i used to be a stripper all my comedy is about like sex and um 
so I get like like when we put we made that like dancing video yeah and then I was like should I not post that on my feed I'm always worried if an industry person went on my page and saw that would they be like oh she's just one of those slutty comics who's not like really good at like what she does well no I also yeah. think that like you we all got into comedy because on some level we want some type of validation right yeah. so it comes from some place of deep insecurity mm-hmm. and so then you start to at a certain level like you're like okay I have to work through this shit and for a while I was afraid that working through this shit would make me less funny yeah mm-hmm. that's like such a thing. oh really so, I never yeah. thought about that yeah like oh mm-hmm. if I get on medication am I still gonna be funny like if I get on antidepressants will I still be funny if I get off Adderall will I be able to function if I do no. all of these things yeah and then and then I've done all of those things and now I feel like so much better so the it's about changing the perspective of like it is possible to be like a funny comedian that's successful and sober or and working on themselves and it actually just makes you funnier yeah I think all that stuff about being fucked up and then getting sober and how it's going to change your art I don't think that's 100 percent true yeah. I actually have never been on stage fucked up. I got sober before I started doing oh, stand-up. I have. Uh, yeah, I've never been fucked up on stage. Really? Never. Really? I, I'd never, I would never drink before I got on stage. Wow. So I, I used I, to. I feel very oh. grateful in that because I don't yeah. know what the other side is like. So oh. I never... It's... I never had to get a, really oh, no, yeah what have yes. you been like shit faced or yes. like or That's also so what I wonder are people who get really mm-hmm. high I would be really paranoid oh yeah yeah I'd yeah, be like, yeah what are they looking yeah. at why you are you looking at me what okay you- smoking weed before can't do it I smoke weed um I don't drink I haven't drank in a long time just because like I don't really like but it have you been like trashed on stage yes and what do you remember what it was like no not really because I was trashed yeah. yeah you know it was more like when I first started so like almost 10 years ago i'm getting like drunk do a bringer show yeah and like like, who knows what happened along the way you know what i mean but then the second that you start to realize oh like i actually want to make this a career like would you go to work drunk yeah right no so why would you go on stage drunk? would you go to work high no a friend of mine who is a very funny comedian um would drink a lot every time before she performed and she I don't think she looked really messy. Yeah, but then it becomes a crutch too. Because she's so funny, but she looked shit faced. Yeah, and it was like if you stop drinking, you will just shoot the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. you, sh- yeah. you start to realize like, oh, it does matter. <laughs> yeah, you know that is like that, and that's what like kind of propelled me into sobriety. I was like, wait a second, like I don't have time to waste, and I could be so much better if I just stopped fucking myself up. Yeah, you're just on it more, and your yeah. work ethic. It's like um, when I first got sober, my ex. He was um, sober as well. He was a workaholic and like he all he did was care about work. And I, re- I wasn't there yet in my mm-hmm. sobri- like where I was at in sobriety. And I was just like, damn, I can't wait to be there. And now I'm there. And it's like I, I yeah. you know, you just work. It's like you just switch the addiction. Yeah. And you're just like obsessively like working every day and doing stuff. That's, it's yeah, all good, that's though. And then I did talk to my therapist and I was like, I feel like all I care about is work. And she's like, well, you're actually at the age where like that's really important to people at your age group to like get good at their job. So yeah. it's okay. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I but I know there is a balance that I need. Yeah, totally. But it is like switching one addiction for another. Yeah. It's a better addiction. Yeah. <laughs> like Sarah yeah. got a keyboard. Do you have a hobby? Oh yeah. I have a did keyboard. A- <laughs> I got wow. a keyboard bitch. I was like, I need something chic in 2020. <laughs> Let's finance this keyboard. Are uh, they expensive? I'm just curious. No, I got a great deal. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Are you- I'm going to be paying <laughs> it off for the next 30 months. Oh, are really? you good at it? Do you, are you like learning? No, okay. I'm not good at it. But I, but I wanted something that i didn't have to be good at like i have this sick fantasy though of having like this (laughs) okay picture this it's the holiday season (laughs) i have a windy staircase in the home that i own yes Mm -hmm. i'm in a gown it it um just like brushes the ground too yes because it's like marabou or like something yes and i'm in a gown and i am walking to the piano while trays are being passed of hors d'oeuvres mm. by mm-hmm. caterers in Texas. But, yeah absolutely mm-hmm. i sit at the piano maybe I and play. everyone starts clapping when you come down <laughs> yeah, the yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> and there's a oh, couple of yeah. <laughs> so a couple sick. of whispers who are like, Oh, she looks great. Did she get something done? Who is her doctor? Yeah. yeah. They're all yeah. peasants. They're all peasants. <laughs> yeah, everyone's a peasant. They're and uncomfortable. <laughs> they're they don't feel like they belong. Yeah. They don't feel like they, they belong. They don't. And and I sit down and I start playing I don't know what holiday song. Sleigh bells ring. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sleigh bells oh, ring. Wow. Are you listening? <laughs> Are you I acting s- like everybody is not around? You're like, this is just me and my alone time. This is just, they're like, oh, what has she been working on? Nobody has seen her play before. Ooh. Sits down, bam. Everyone's like, this bitch is multi-talented. Yeah. I have my moment. And so- you have a couple of jokes and everyone's laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you she make a couple crowd of, work. and you're like, and thank you. I hope you enjoyed the cookies. And everyone just breaks out and laughing. Yeah. And it wasn't quite funny, but like. But it lands. You're at that level <laughs> yeah. where everything you say is just really funny. Yeah. That's success. That's that is success. success. You know what I mean? Yeah. You ever see people like that? They're like, and no one's yeah. going to tell me I'm not good at the piano. I want to be Even so if successful, not- no one tells me the truth. Yeah. I think about this all the time. Like, if Beyonce. <laughs> That's so funny. What if Beyonce tried to do stand up? Like, would, how would it be received? Because you know there's no fucking way the bitch would be funny. It yeah. would be received well. She could have somebody yeah. write it for her. Yeah. But I have seen, like, a lot of stars come in and do stand up. And, like, certain people, like, like uh, certain people come in and everyone's, just, like, Seinfeld came in. And everyone was just laughing at what he was saying because it was him yeah. doing his thing. Right. And they weren't like the best jokes. He was working on his jokes, but you know, he might've been workshopping stuff. It's hard to get a From read. a comics point of view, I could tell he was figuring some stuff out, but from an audience point of view, it was Seinfeld being Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. Right. So right. it was like hilarious, but I've, but you know, there's been other big actors who have come in here and done a set in the main room and bombed really hard. And, and they didn't come back again. Yeah. Well, no. So basically, I just wanted a hobby that where like the stakes weren't high. Yeah. Whereas so like, you do a couple songs. So I do a couple songs. I could do Mary Had a Little Lamb and Well, mind you. Classic. When the Saints yeah, yeah, yeah. go marching in, crush it. Mrs. Robinson, I can do that. And here's to you. That one? Yes. Okay. Thank you for letting listeners Simon know. Simon and Garfunkel? S S N G. Yeah. And um and then I just I'm having fun with it, and I it's love just like that. the stakes aren't high. I'm not like I have to gain something out of this. Right. It's literally just for fun, and it's not toxic. It's like the first not toxic hobby I've had. I need one. Do you have one? Um, yeah, I paint. Yeah, yeah. but, but yeah, you're really good, good at it. Yeah. No, do I have like a my uh, like a hobby that I've just like picked up? No. I need one. Yeah. Get the keyboard, bitch. God no, God, that's not for me. So good. I cannot stop staring. Thank you. Yeah, you so guys both have good. really great makeup. I just did this like purple lipstick in the bathroom and I was regretting it. <laughs> and then when it. you sat down, I was like, fuck, she I look mentally ill. Room. No, you don't. <laughs> Sarah, you don't. Thank you. Back to self love, guys. Um, so, <laughs> anyways, back to self love. No, Hobby, I. Uh, I also like think that, um, you know, like when you break up with someone, how you should be dating yourself. Yes. Like taking a bath, doing a face mask, taking yourself out to dinner. Yeah. I think that stuff, this is for the listener. Just continuing yeah. with those tips. Yep. Yeah. And then you start feeling good about yourself. Yeah. You're like, you're like, I worked out again. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah. I'd wife you've, me up. You've been yeah. doing spin three times a week and yes. it shows. I've been doing spin three times Have a week. Have you really? She, yeah. she, you look That's so good. You've lost weight. Have you weighed yourself? Yeah. You look really skinny. But I don't do it. I just do it from the right headspace. Yeah. Yeah, but Sarah, the inches are falling off. <laughs> <laughs> How many? And you have lost weight. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. But I've been doing it like every like I do it a lot. I've been doing it for like over a year. Um, but the r- main reason I do it is for mental mm. reasons. Yeah. yeah. Cuz it's so like, it's dude. Yeah. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, "Whoa." Well, you know what's a really great thing that I notice makes a huge difference is that when I can, if I'm not in a mega fucking rush, I hate a mega r- fucking rush. <laughs> I'm I'm downing myself right now. Why? A mega Just- fucking rush. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh that's, a, that's a self-judgment no when i'm not in a big rush that's better when i'm not in a big rush i try not to look at my phone the first 30 minutes be- after i wake up and the first 30 minutes be- i mean sorry i got um a little distracted because i hear some drilling outside i hear, you hear that okay, i was wondering what that was yeah what is that? Oh, that's a phone. Is that my phone? Oh, is that your phone? <laughs> Something was being picked up. Well, he was drilling oh, some. It's not mine. Okay. Someone. G- oh, it, it mine? must be. I think it's. Um... Oh, sorry. Is it yours? It's me. The vibration. 
It's vibration. We were like, what is that? Like, somebody's drilling. That was odd. Um, <laughs> that was like an odd um, thing. Oh, yeah. So you don't look at your phone the first 30 minutes after you wake up, and you don't look at your phone um, before 30 minutes before you go to sleep. That's what I need to start doing. I'm and so bad with I'll the phone. I'll tell you what it changes. The first yeah. 30 minutes when you wake up, if you start looking at your phone, you're already on like everyone else's schedules and you just are in like a much, me personally, I'm in like much more of a panic. I feel like scattered. Everything is like all over the place. I'm like rushing. I don't feel like centered and like yeah. calm. And like the first 30 minutes today, I had, I had some time. So I specifically did not. I put the Bossa Nova station on my Pandora. She I, loves the Bossa Nova the Boss station. Of, we about <laughs> yes, this last we have. Time. Yes, you love the Bossa Nova station. Remember when you showed up in that shirt and you're like, yeah. <laughs> I felt inspired because I was listening to the Bossa Boss Nova. Nova station. I'm I'm a little bit <laughs> sick of it because I've heard all the songs by now. Oh. So I need to get with another fun station, but because that was just the Pandora one. May I, I suggest to, French? Yeah, Sarah. Ooh whoa i was literally just thinking <laughs> in my head i'm thinking french you're right I'm telling you you put on french that french cafe, music dude french cafe you fucking playing the keyboard that you own okay and then you get in your car and you put on french music and you're like fuck yeah i am making it yeah unstoppable you can't talk shit to me i am chic bitch i'll go go to target still i'm not above it but i'm trying to manifest you know neiman's <laughs> Ooh. Um, Sax. Neiman. R.I.P. Barney's. I was um, gonna. What do you do with that extra 30 now? So yeah. here we are. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so I, I put the music <laughs> station on. I get in the mood. I, I started scraping my tongue. I'll I'll get that. I'll, <laughs> Wait. I'll get the plaque off. I'll, <laughs> Instead of social media, she's scraping I'm her scraping, tongue. I'm scraping. And then what I did this morning is I stretched. Whoa, I, w- I didn't see that coming. I, here's what I do. <laughs> here's what I do. <laughs> I open up the windows. Oh. If, if I have lemon. This if morning. I have. I'm getting that fresh air, though. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm getting that fresh air. I'm letting that mm. sun in. And I am making, <laughs> I'm making hot water with lemon. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I am stretching my own little stretch. And <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say my own little legs. And, <laughs> and what's really nice is continuing to get ready. You're you're because you're just having a morning with yourself. I'm gonna do a little journaling if I have extra time. Three pages in a notebook, yeah. free writing, artist yes, way artist style, way. morning pages, mm-hmm. all about it. Um, a meditation. I'm just doing any sort of. I'm just being with myself. Yeah. When you finally get onto your phone and then you go about your day, it's just a different way of life. Totally. I needed to fucking hear that. It's That's it a good really reminder. it makes such a difference, and yeah. I really notice it. And um, the days that I don't, my days just don't feel as good, and they feel all over the place and scattered. And I heard actually Ed Milet. Do you know who he is? No, he's like one of these fucking motivational guys. He said, um, "I have more. I'm like the probability is higher that I have more control of my day. I'm not in a reactive state." You know, you're not like Ooh, yeah. you're you're just like you're just going about the day in a different way. Yeah. I mean, also like social media before bed, <sighs> those spirals, you're Ooh. like, but who's this bitch like in his shit? Oh, Wait, it doesn't matter. Like I that does not matter. Yeah. Because that's she not up to? real. Like yeah. I oh, mem- she booked that. Yeah. yeah. I remember huh. like um, yeah. right. when my huh. Comedy Central series came out, the first episode was with Doug Benson and some like alt right group found it and they were like attacking it and like talking about how I was like a Jew and like they didn't like me because I was a Jew and a woman and it was like and I was like I did not see this coming like in my head I thought it was gonna be like praise so yeah. I was like what the fuck and it was the first one and I was in this state of like severe anxiety like totally shook because I was like I feel so affected by these outside people that I don't know and Stephanie Sambari, she takes my phone and she goes, what if I take this away from you? Like, how do you feel? Because, hmm. like, none of this is even real. So, yeah. like, if I take this from you, mm-hmm. how do you feel? And I was like, I guess I feel fine. And she was like, yeah. I like that. And it was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> this, like, yeah. seems so obvious. But, like. Yeah. You're just forced to be in the moment then. It's so fucking hard, though. Yeah. Well, it's not that hard, but we, it, we think it is. Yeah, on Monday night after the store, I got home. It was like 9.30. 
what I did was I, I put my phone on airplane mode. I didn't touch it for the rest of the night. I took a hot shower, put Ooh. lotion all over my body, <laughs> got in a this big is- plush spa robe, started reading a book, and then watched some Netflix, no. and I couldn't have unwinded harder. No. Yes. What a beautiful fucking night. <laughs> oh it my felt God. so good. And I That's forgot so to nice. mention I did a little witchcraft. But do you do witchy stuff? I don't. I mean, other than like the Palo Santo was oh, even that. That's a little Palo Santo. It's a little witchy. I do a little. I do a little. Lemon. Not no. Uh, ice. Yeah, <laughs> you know, not. not, not no. Do you have sage? I I do sometimes you when know, I have it. You know what I started doing? I started saging my phone, my laptop, and my vision board. Do you say things? <laughs> when you sage? No, fuck. I should, huh? Do you, I don't know. I, I I've been thinking like, do I like say a prayer in my head or do I like? Think you could like thoughts? set an intention. I forgot. Yeah, intention, yeah, yeah. You should be doing that. It's yeah, whatever you want. I'll do yeah. it tonight. But I think it's just like the ritual of doing something like that. Yeah. It's really, it's more than the ritual. It's, it's resetting. The, it's the intention. I got to tell you. My intention was reset. Right. So yeah. it's the intention behind the ritual versus I had I had a feeling, ritual. actually. I did have that feeling that I was just resetting the energy on these things. Yeah. Totally. Which is what you got to fucking do. What were you going to say before? Oh, it's just like like hearing you talk about like going home, taking a shower, getting into a robe i'm like that that's such like a new kind of concept to me because mm-hmm. before it's like i'm out i'm getting fucked up and then i go home and i pass out and it's like now i have this time yeah it's so self-care like, i actually I've felt like heard of it i literally felt like i was on a xanax by the time i was in the robe yeah i just felt like <laughs> i did i was like a better my hat. eyes were like that like you know those go- <laughs> you know those gurus who are just like who yeah. are like, and then what you'll have to do you know, yeah, I don't yeah. Know, whatever they say yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh we know bitch uh, unwinding is like a huge thing yeah i've never known it i i know me i'm just most now of getting us are unwinding it. with our phones well and also because it's like yeah. a lot of yeah. times okay after you do a set i'm like wide awake yeah oh, wide awake, after yeah. i do a set i'm like what do i do now because i can't just go to bed mm-hmm. so there has to be like some way to come down from the adrenaline mm-hmm. of like being up here and i do think that like baths i got a facial roller i'm doing that oh, you know i'm walking so around nice. the house yeah do you put it in the freezer and yes then- i do oh, yeah so it feels good. so good in the morning uh, yes yeah, what else does. do you do um, what do you do to unwind after a show I take a bath. Okay. I every take time? A bath. I take a bath almost every night. What do you put in it? It's so nice. Sometimes bath salt, sometimes CBD. Oh, I need more of those. I'll Please. take a bath when every I night. That's Please. so nice. I take a bath every night. That's luxurious. It's so fucking luxurious. It's decadent. Sometimes they're so hot when I get out, my heart's racing. Does that ever <laughs> yeah. happen? Yeah. yeah. I take fucking scalding hot showers. I do it till like, so like until yeah. my skin but is just have you ever? Yeah, has me your too. Heart ever raced after a hot bath? Of course. Yes. Okay, is that okay? Because I get scared. I think like, just like don't get out of the bath too fast. Have you gotten out of the bath too fast? And then you're like, well, everything's black and who am I? <laughs> I, 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 I get That's so lightheaded and i have to lay down on the bed and i'm like yeah and i'm like someone's gonna find me like this you know <laughs> uh, uh, like whitney oh whitney Houston. sorry to paint that picture no that's like, is oh. that well she was in the bath yeah that's my fear maybe her bath was <laughs> too just much too cbd <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, so you unwind you do the bath i do the bath sometimes i read i'm banging around on my keys she's got the keys yeah. the yeah. ivories yeah i got the ivories Ooh, what I call them now? Playing the ivories. I play the ivories. I got headphones. I could just put them on. What do you do to unwind? Honestly, I'm. T- I don't You're just getting it. into it. I'm just getting into it because my thing is like go home and sit on my fucking phone for 45 minutes and just be like the. Like, 45. Try four hours, oh dude. Oh my god, it's all four I do. I, I sit on my fucking phone. I know. I'm having such a hard time. I'm like slowly getting back into reading because it's so hard for me to like pay attention for more than like two minutes. I'm like mm-hmm. that. Oh, it's so hard. And now that I'm like not coming home shit face, which I was almost every night, I'm like, all right, what do we do now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do we relax? So, yeah. I don't know. It's a new world. Are you Latina and Irish? No, not at all. <laughs> not not either. <laughs> what of are those. you? Uh, Egyptian. And what? Yeah, my mom. Well, somewhat. My mom. My grandfather's from Egypt. You're Egypt. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, so yeah. beautiful. <laughs> right? You so Did yeah. you know that? No. Yeah, he was. From Why Egypt. aren't you reacting? Egyptian? Egyptian? <laughs> you know another Egyptian? I've never met one. No, Gabby's the only Egyptian I've ever known. Yeah. Tell me more. Pirate. Egyptian and what? Like, baby. Um, God, French. 
It's like French. Yeah, a you, have French. A, you have a you have a you have a good exotic look. Yeah, thank you. I thought you were s- Hispanic. No, but I do dress like I am. Okay, I, that's I, it. Because the hoop. And it, no, it's <laughs> the <laughs> art too. Yeah, I I'm grew being, up from LA, right? It, I'm from San Diego, and I grew oh. up in a super like. My, my my all of the artwork in my house growing up was like mexican yeah. my house i like lived in an adobe like i was just wow like, very, i know i was like super uh this bitch lived in puebla what part of <laughs> pueblo nice <laughs> one um, what part of san diego is that oceanside okay yeah it was kind of the hood I, I, it wasn't I, like an ad- it was like an adobe like the inside with like bricks and the top had that like adobe fucking i like that like yeah. a mud hut like, like a, yeah like, like terracotta a, like a terracotta and like it was like bright orange and Ooh! Like very, yeah it was a very artistic house and all of like my mom was always bringing home like like mexican artwork uh, oh, yeah so was i love that heavy heavy influence was well, that like near old town san diego no it's like the, 45 minutes okay north because like that's, where, right that's after what orange i thought county. of when you said that yeah it's like right after orange county right no oh i'm <laughs> we don't know <laughs> no Oceanside tell us more like, about oceanside it's, it's kind of nice it's like nice now but when i was growing up it was like pretty like yeah methy and like the hood it was very hoodie it's not hoodie. so hoodie anymore it's like way more gentrified Everything's yeah. so gentrified. It's everything so gentrified. Yeah. Um, so do you find that painting helps you relax? So fucking much. Mm. When I get into the flow of it, it's like I can just go for hours and hours and hours and just like shut the fuck up and paint. Like it's so nice. Wow. You're, yeah, and you're really good at it. She's, She's in really the flow. Good. I get into the flow. I get into the flow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know why I said that twice. But. No, because that's <laughs> no. what this podcast was about. <laughs> that was accurate. About the flow. Yeah. What about like after you bomb, do you ever hurt yourself with like fried food or something? I would just I was just getting wasted. <sighs> um, oh, when boy. I first started, yeah, I would get drunk and then yeah, cry. Yeah. You uh, cried? Oh yeah, I used to cry all the time. You, I've never cried after a set ever. Oh my god, I used to cry. The first three years, I cried nonstop. Really? Uh, I feel like I still cry. I almost cried. I was here two weeks ago and I kind of bombed on fucking friends and family and I was like, time to die. Did you cry? I wanted to. I was so embarrassed. I like sat in the corner and I was like, please nobody look at me. It was like one of those and I walked out of here with like with my head. You down. didn't bomb. It, I felt terrible. I was it's, just like, no. You know what though? Here. Up there on Monday night, the energy is so nerve wracking. Yeah, I is. still don't like it. And it was the day after Kobe and died and it was just a fucking I, it, everything here was just like Yeah. Oh. Yeah. God, uh, that room I used to feel, but it still is just, like not, that. not as much for you anymore. Not anymore. And now I just feel so desensitized. Yeah. I'm just mm. like you get to a place of like they're not all that big yeah you know either way yeah. you still have another show either way even if yeah. you crush you still have to do this shit again yeah you know what's so true. funny Ari <laughs> Manis one time he bombed so hard he got a haircut <laughs> no that's what he said <laughs> so funny uh, he went and got a haircut after that's so the hardest, funny the hardest I ever bombed was when I decided that I was gonna take an edible but I didn't know I was gonna go on stage mm-hmm. fuck and this is, and I bombed so bad. I started talking in a Western accent. What? Do you know about that? <laughs> no. Chelsea, what you are know? you talking about? Oh, my God. Here? Yes. That and this is was, so fucking It was funny. the day that I got my. Wait, when was that? This was like a long time oh, ago. okay. It's it was so when I got funny. my weed card, when you still needed a weed okay, card. Okay, wait, what? Okay, so I got my weed card. And this is what made me never smoke weed before stand up. Everyone, I had this experience. So I get my weed card earlier in the day from a doctor in Venice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, for yeah, your headaches yeah, for, for my anxiety. Mm-hmm. So I have like, I buy a bag of gummies and I have no idea. Like I have two gummies, 10 milligrams. It's really not that much. But if you aren't eating edibles, it's a lot, especially if you're about to go on stage. I get on stage and I have n- no idea how long I've been up there. Like the words are coming out of my mouth <laughs> oh, and I'm like, like what am I even saying? Like, I it was like an out of body experience. Mm. Like the words are coming out of my mouth, but I feel like I have no control over the way that they're sounding. And then I see that the light has been on, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" For how long? No idea. Oh, and that's the first question I think in my head. I go, a. "How long has it been on?" In my head, I'm like, like years. I'm like, it could have been on for five minutes, and I could be running the light, or it could have just gone <laughs> on. Like I have no idea. And I'm so high, and like the words are coming out of my mouth, but they're not like. I'm too aware of what's happening. Like, I'm not present in the moment. I'm like, words are coming out in the light. And they're just like the most painful experience. I start talking really fast and the words start coming out like, a Texan and I'm like, like, I'm like talking like this all of a sudden. Did you acknowledge Um, that you were high? No. So I just bomb <laughs> the last the last minute. It's like you know those people no. that like have stroke and then they wake up speaking another language and everyone's like, "Are you okay?" How did they learn it? 
I don't know. It's like it was some <laughs> weird mental thing happened. And Wait, so you also decided to go to, okay, well, it looks like I got the lot in Castle <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Then the host comes on and is like, I don't know. She's from the Valley. I'm not sure why she was talking in a, oh. in a Western accent. And in my head, I'm like, wow, somebody else heard it. Like, that wasn't all just, like, in my head. That you know what I mean? Like, I bombed as hard as I thought I bombed. Thought. That's crazy. I was like, I get into an uber by myself go to swingers by myself order a blt and what? a shake and a what? shake by myself what i'm eating alone this is the hardest i've ever bombed i'm eating alone at swingers eating a blt in a booth like and i'm so high just like s- devastated at this point okay because this is when like potluck was such a big deal to me that was potluck. it was potluck it was, uh, it was it only was, three minutes so you it was only- three minutes but it seemed like uh. an eternity that i was up there and i was like and that's my set. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh and then fucking I ran into people. They're like, what are you doing here? Are you by yourself? And I was like, yeah, I just had a really bad spot. And I just needed to get out of the comedy store like immediately. It was just like but that's shame so funny eating to at swingers. But to such a public place by yourself with such an odd meal. <laughs> yeah, know. it's such an odd meal. It's not an odd meal. It's not. But like. Oh, yeah. No, that's. It what, is. That's but how to it, sit there like alone in the high. That sounds like right. the worst. I would have just gone home. I know. No, I couldn't go home and like yeah. l- look at myself. Yeah. I was like, I just need to look at something that's not myself. And I don't even feel comfortable being around other people right now. Yeah. I just oh, need fuck. to like shame eat this BLT. That's so That was funny. the hardest I've ever bombed in my life. Getting off stage when you bomb, there's nothing as horrible. You're just looking down. You're looking, you're like body and you're just like, no one look at me. Do you remember your life. worst bomb? I have so fucking many of them. It's hard. Um, I think the worst, worst bomb I ever did was Madhouse. And I bombed. I had such a bad, I, I was there for like three sets. And I was, I remember the first one was so bad. And I was like, there's no way the next one could be worse. Like, that was my worst. And some fucking how the second one was even worse. And, like, the sets just kept getting worse. And I was like, okay, cool. Time to just die. Time to die. (laughs) Yeah, that sucks. And there were, like, guys. Like, there were two guys in the front that were just texting. And I was like, you guys just going to text? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, (gasps) The worst is when you're yeah. trying to do crowd work and they're not participating and Whoa. like you're in a really big room and everyone's just like, they all, what are you doing? Yeah, that's horrible. I, my worst bomb, I still remember and actually popped up on my Facebook memories a couple days ago, but I guess, I guess <laughs> it was three years ago and like, it's not like I continuously think about it, but I can, but it was for some reason my but worst one. how could one. you not? And this was like no. the dumbest show. It didn't it matter. You humble. This was at a bar. It was at Eric Eric Allegria. Remember that guy? Yeah. Was it in so Burbank? He, no. He had a. It was further out. He had a um a bar show in what's somewhere in the valley. It starts with an S. Uh, Satakoy. Like uh, no, it's like some other. It's just like a little bit further out. It starts with an S. Hmm. It could ten, be anything. The part of the valley that it was. Um. I can't remember. Was what. it like Santa Clarita? No, it like, was like like what's like forty five minutes into the valley that starts with an S. Selmar? I don't know. Close. Like there's like Chatsworth. No, Reseda. it starts with an S. There isn't really anything deep. There is there's the street Satakoy. No, it might there's... have been around there, but I don't know. Anyways, it was this, <laughs> it was just like a really shitty bar show. No one was paying attention. And for some reason, like, I oh don't God. know, the lights just got really bright. Have you ever had that? The lights get like yeah. really, like really bright, almost like Requiem for a Dream when you're on the set of something. And it's like, king. And, like, <laughs> yes. and I just like, <gasps> I know I, what you're talking I about. I think I just like, uh, I just like got disconnected from reality. I don't know. Something <laughs> I felt like I was, I felt like I was, I had the feeling that I was drowning on stage. It felt like I was drowning. And Ugh. I think I either I couldn't say anything, I couldn't think of anything, or I couldn't connect. Something just weird happened to me. And that was, like, beyond the worst. Because I've never felt like I was drowning before. Yeah. It was very <sighs> odd. But, yeah, I guess it was three years ago. But it was such a low... It didn't fucking matter. It yeah. was like such a dumb, low stakes. It so was, much it, of it. It was a really a lot matter. of it doesn't, but in, yeah. Yeah. you feel like it matters so much. Because there's that stupid fucking saying that's like earlier you're only on, as good especially. As your last set, and you know, wait, what? Oh, you're but, only oh. yeah, and like you get off stage after you bomb, and you're like, cool, that's my, that's the best I can do. <laughs> that's what I think. I'm like, no, I never, I'm no, always like, I'm always so. like, I can't wait for my next one after a Sometimes bomb. Sometimes it's just oh. you're just off. Sometimes you're off. The crowd's off. Yeah. 
Yeah, you start taking it way less personally the longer you do it. Yeah. yeah. You're like, I don't yeah. fucking care anymore. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I don't care. If I feel like I showed up and did what I want to do and my energy was cool and I'm in like a good mood and I'm just like, oh, well, oh, all right. Yeah. Like sometimes it doesn't feel bad when it's like, well, that was weird. But then for some reason, if you fell off and there, I don't know, it's like a little fine line. Totally. I kind totally of have to line. pee. You do? Yeah. Okay, you can go. Um, I'll talk to it. Did you, when you were getting, so, did you start comedy before or after you got sober? Me? Yeah. Beef. Um, I started after I got sober. Okay, so you were so you were sober when you started. Yeah, comedy. hold on. Mike, is Gabby in the frame still? Totally. Thank you. Love that. Because um, it's just this. Okay. It's a tight squeeze. There we are. In a weird setup. What if I wasn't in the frame the whole time? <laughs> Um, yeah, I started after I got sober, so okay. I never really, you know, I never knew what it was like to feel fucked up. So I just got used to what it was like. Yeah. I feel like since I have, like, since I am, like, now, now I am, uh, my comedy, like, I'm in a weird area with it. Yeah. Like, I'm not super, I don't, like, Are I you feel, anxious? I'm, like, I feel like I'm not as, like, funny right now. Like, things feel a little serious, because I'm, like, working so hard on, like, getting my brain right. Yeah. So when I'm on stage, I'm, like, just... I, do, I don't feel super funny right now. Yeah, I know what you mean. Does, does um, that make sense? I think so, yeah. I feel like you can feel that way, though, about anything. Like, yeah. if you had a weird day or if something bad happened and you just, like, weren't in the mood to go on stage, yeah. I all the time don't feel funny. But then that's yeah. uh, most of the time when I go on stage when I don't feel funny, I end up having a really good set. That's always how it is. Yeah, isn't that weird? It's always how it is. Because you just don't care. Yeah. Yeah, my therapist was like, do you think you're going to be able to come up with material when you're not living in constant chaos? And I was <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, but that's just like the idea of what a comedian is. Yeah, too. right, right. Like I need to be getting so fucked up all the time. So I have stories. I actually completely forgot this, but I took these pills for the first couple years every single time before a set. It was um, the beta blockers. It, not I've tried those, but I don't I didn't like it. Okay. It was on it. New mood. It's on it is like that Joe Rogan okay, pill yeah, Joe company. Rogan. Yeah, yeah. But I started taking them and I took them every single time before I performed for three years straight, every single set. And, um, and they were just like, they would just ha sort of help you remove anxiety. Cause I was, cause I would be really anxious. Yeah. And then I just didn't need them anymore. Did it help? Like, I think it did help me. And then they kind of stopped. Then they started like doing the opposite. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, these don't work anymore. But I actually just didn't need them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was like a thing where I like couldn't have caffeine close to like before I performed because it would make me really anxious. Yeah. But, th you know, this will be my seventh year. So like now I don't really have any of that seven stuff. Seven years sober? No, in doing stand up. Oh, okay. I'll have four in, in, in May. Four okay. years sober in May. Uh -huh. Um, I should have seven as well, but yeah. I relapsed. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I okay. relapsed for almost four years ago. Yeah. But, um, yeah, which happens. I mean, yeah. Are you still smoking weed? No, I've never smoked weed. Oh, ever? I mean, I have, but, like, I don't. Oh, really? You know? yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I've, I've probably smoked weed maybe, maybe 20 times in my life. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's not her drug of choice. It's not my drug of choice. I don't like alcohol. I'm a, I'm a fucking uppers. Like, I Coke? love, oh, my God, I love Coke. Coke is my life. Co I, fuck. I love I love Coke. Coke. Love Adderall. Love Molly. I don't oh like God. Molly. Oh, I love Molly. Ugh. Wait, I I know that we talked about. So we all just were on Sarah's podcast last week. Yeah. So this is a little bit of an overlap, but I I felt like we didn't um talk enough about uh the egg thing to an extent. I don't know what's going on. I think they they like ghosted me. So you <laughs> could, could we just uh, introduce that to my listeners? Yeah. Because I think it's interesting. I don't know anyone else who's done it, but you um. You wanted to sell your eggs. I'm was I'm like in the process, I think, and then. Uh, so how did you find the? How did you come to selling eggs? Was it just a large chunk of money? Was it? it yeah. They, okay. They give you a lot of money, but my friend did ten thousand, right? Ten thousand the first time, twelve twelve thousand the second time. Your friend you did, did it even more for the second egg. Even more for the second egg. Yeah, my friend. Well, did but it. the third egg. Bitch. How many do we <laughs> have? We, uh, Don't we have like eight? No, you have oh. a lot. We have a okay. lot. Think Never of mind. how many periods you have in a lifetime. Yeah. Oh. My so and right. how many eggs come out per period? One, one. just one. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. But we only you have like eleven. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's, okay. it's that like health chart you saw that video right of it being like, burr, 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 and then it it's like, like and then it's like, and then it's the like, and then the little hand yeah. is like, yeah, right, <laughs> and then it just kind of moves down, and that's why you get your period just to move that little egg out. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they get that little egg out. How did you guys know this so well? 
Um, Took a little bit of remembering for me. It's okay. Um, so I'm dropping it. I don't know if I really remember that. I think I remembered it while you were talking. About yeah. It. Yeah. It sounds familiar. Eggs? Well, because when I it's did like stone that. science, oh. Kim and I researched about vaginas, eggs, all of it. Fascinating wow. shit. Fascinating what did you learn? Shit. Um, there's lots of different types of vaginas. Well, we know so that. There's right? all wait, kinds wait, wait, of what loose mean? tight. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Like, have you watched lips, Goop no Labs? Lips. No. no. Uh, wait, what? Goop Lab. No, it doesn't look good, is it? It's wild. I know what, we're wait, staying positive. What is it? Okay, so Goop Lab is Gwyneth it's, Paltrow's yeah. new show on Netflix, and each of them has a different theme. I watched the one on uh, psilocybin, so where they all did mushrooms, and then I watched the one on vaginas. And I was like, I am shocked. She's shook. like oh pussied out right now. She's the candle. Out. I think the, I candle, think the candle, candle was is a marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It I was thought to that promote too. It. But it was just like talking about how like there isn't that much like knowledge and women don't openly discuss vaginal shit. So mm-hmm. that's what the whole episode's about. And then you see all these different vaginas they show you and you're like, whoa. Oh what God. do you mean? It's on all Netflix? These, they show yeah, you graphic photos. Yes. Of different, look at the position I'm in for this conversation. So they show you graphic images. Yeah. Yeah, graphic t- different types of lips i would assume yes i love talking about pussies oh my you god. do oh my god so a couple months ago over the summer i went camping and uh i went with really? like a bunch of girls that i didn't really know that wait well. that's f- kind of fun oh my god it was so fun <laughs> i was i went with the guy that i was dating wait. and he like brought me and it was like all of his friends and like we did so much coke we're like in the mountains <gasps> fucking just oh, doing coke and i was god. like Let's go look at each other's pussies in a, <laughs> in a tent. And was the guys yeah. there too? No, not the guys just the were girls. Not. It was just like ten girls in a tent. We were like, yeah, all... that's some coke shit. Yeah, uh, totally. Okay. And we were all uh, like, uh, I mean, pussies. I'm... And what did you see? I just saw you know a bunch of pussies, and we did were like, mostly... wow, beautiful. We were all just like gassing each other's yeah. pussies up. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> I yeah, so I, uh, wow, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. my god, girl, go off. Uh, uh, yeah. We love her. Do we t- <laughs> what kind do you have? I have a lippy one. A li- both lips or just one? Both lips. Both. It's like it, it's like a good, you know. They're definitely not tucked in, but they're not like hanging loose. Yeah, you know? I have like one that's just like hi. Oh, yeah, you have. A, you I have just a have one, and it's just. Like, I do have one that's doing. You that have too. one too. Yeah, I've been meaning to, I've been yeah. meaning to tell you, Charles. <laughs> And Wait, I, can I'm like, get, can you get back in with the other? Sarah! At least be on the same page. Sarah. Both out or both in. Wait, yeah. do you know how good this just made me feel? I was, I've been meaning to tell you You, it. thank you. Every time I look at my pussy, I'm like, I gotta tell Chelsea. <laughs> I gotta tell her what my secret is. Um, it's that's so, so weird, funny. though. It's so taboo. I remember, like, when I was younger, like, my first best friend, Danica, she had... Like a like one of the like the tight pussies. You yeah, know, like that's what my friend pussy. Allie has. Yeah, and I was I'm so, gonna show you guys a picture of it. Yeah, show us. Do you mind? I'm no. gonna pull it up while you keep talking. I would get so fucked up by it though because I was like, why does yours look like healthy and tucked in and mine doesn't? And she'd be like, I don't know, but yours is fucked up. And I just like had such a complex. And I remember seeing a doctor for the first time, and she was like, it's normal. And I was like, no, it's not. Yeah, no, that's what this whole episode. You of- saw a doctor? Well, an OBGYN for the first time. I remember like um that's what this whole episode of this Goop show is about is like telling all these women that their vaginas are normal it's well, interesting and then, and then porn stars go and get them reconstructed so they don't have lips so then we're all fucked up with that you know we don't yeah. know we don't know what pussies are supposed to look like yeah until you're I'm doing in... coke in the so fucking what kind of pos- these are all naked photos from the past for me oh these are all this, this is, is Chelsea's this is, coke look, it, wait, uh, these are you these are yeah this is this is my 20s secret file of naked photos wait where is that <laughs> wait can i show you my boobs is that weird? Yeah, no. Is no, that weird? No. I have really nice boobs. This is a picture of them looking really big. You have great tits. Uh, she has, no, it's tits? Yeah. yeah, they're real and they're Those are they look real they tits? look fake. That's how good they are. This was my body at 23. Those are your real fucking tits. Yeah. Sorry. I'm trying to I'm trying to find <laughs> a naked know. picture. I don't have boobs at all, so I'm no always like, damn. Me and my friend took pictures next to each other of our pussies, oh and we no, sent it to guys... some guy. That's so funny. We no. sent it to a famous film director who is nominated this year. <laughs> um, no. But did for it, some reason, like the pussy picture. For some reason, I can't find. I've never the sent a pussy gone. pic. What? Yeah, neither. Have I. I've never taken one either. What? No. Okay, I'm okay. the weird one then. No. Wait, <laughs> wait, you've never taken a pussy pic? Were you just a stand? by the things you just saw me scrolling no past? i've taken like no i just never been like i'm really good at them <laughs> I, had a, I had a really creative one is it weird that i show you the creative one no Let, is I it love weird? This <laughs> my favorite Wait, subject. I love, how I have love you never show. how have you whoa what is this an ad this is an ad i'm so jealous you have such great tits thanks They're wait like, hold on how have you I never taken one like, what is 
I don't like looking at my pussy. Uh, I don't like. I take ass pictures all the time. But so not. you got to tuck the little thing. Yeah, I'm, always, yeah, tucking tuck I'm yeah. always tucking it. I'm always tucking it. Do you have a loose one? Is my pussy loose? Do you have a loose? So <laughs> a loose picture, a picture of the Lucy. Oh, uh, without it tucked. Without here. it tucked. Yeah, untucked. <laughs> I don't think I'll have an untucked yeah, one. Okay. okay. Hold on. <laughs> I'm showing my creative. Her art direction on her pussy pic. I I I, <laughs> I don't really take them that much anymore because like I'm married like, now, so I'm not like not sending, sending them it. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's like a reflection of my pussy in an ornament. Do you see that? Oh, yes. Look, that doesn't even yes. look like a pussy. I know. It kind of has like that like alien vibe. Did you like tuck it into that picture? No, I, there it looks from the top. It's like that. Wow. But I have to find the bottom part. <laughs> it's like so neat. Yeah, it was neat. Um, That's very, it's a very you know, neat see, pussy. I tuck it in here. Oh, yeah. Your, our pussies do not But do you see how see? there's that one little thing? Yeah. Oh, ours are so different. Do you see how there's oh, a yeah, one? Oh, yeah. Mine's like Do you see how there's a secret? Mine's like that. Do you see how it has a secret? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shown it. No, mine's like that. Wait. I wish I'm, I had one to show you guys. Why I, don't I just you? Show it right now? Yes! Um, Wait. I'm so sorry. Is this okay that I just showed you guys this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Why should we so like normalizing pussy? We're normalizing pussy. Okay. 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 Nothing. Literally nothing. All the episodes. Yours looks like mine? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, man. And, the and what out. is? Can you tuck yours in at all? It's a little. The lips are a little. You don't too have to meaty. tuck it in. I'm uh, okay. Too, too meaty. Does it look like a bomb went off? No. Okay. It doesn't look like ones. sloppy. It's not like long, but I just have big pussy lips. I ha- yeah. Like, I, when I fuck, they get like big. Really? Yeah. But huh. when I fuck, everything. But I think some guys like that. Some guys do like that. Yeah. Guys, I think they like. I don't, they I like really any pussy. Yeah, yeah guys like. It. I th- I don't think guys care as much. Yeah, they don't. No, guys. I feel are just like saying some guys like that. I meant to say some guys particularly really. L- I think like every guy has a, like specific kind of fantasy about certain types of pussies. Yeah, I, it's you know whatever. It's like. I think to I guys. I didn't mean to say. Well, some guys. I meant all guys. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Do you know what I meant? Yeah, no, I totally know what you meant. I think yeah. that. Um, you're like deciding. All you're guys like, yeah. like yeah. all pussies. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. They do. They're yeah. not like if it's like pussy or no pussy. They're gonna pick. If they're gonna pick pussy. Guys like pussy. If Gwyneth doesn't pussy. show her pussy, I don't want to watch the fucking show. Gwyneth doesn't. <laughs> Gwyneth doesn't. But she makes her staff Dude. show. Does she? she? No, you just have to watch it. You have to watch. Wait, I watch wish. I wish. She sends her tra- her staff on like a safari a, on a fucking psychedelic trip. She's not taking the psychedelic. She has like her staff doing it. Uh, you know what I mean? Like ayahuasca. Oh, mushrooms. No mushrooms. Yeah. Have you done ayahuasca? No. Mm-hmm. Have, Have you? you? No, I've done DMT. I don't like hallucinogenics. I don't either. I was never a mushroom girl. I hate them. They're horrifying. They're horrifying. Uh, they've been horrible every time. Really? They're you not like fun. Shrooms? I don't like the walls yeah. breathing. Yeah. Why would I want to look over and see the wall breathing? <laughs> <laughs> How is that fun? Why is that interesting? See, because for me, to me, it, it's more of like um. It, like I like the experience that I have had through psychedelics has always been very positive. Mine is always mm. negative. I've had negative trips, Dark. but for the most part, like I've I've felt like a part of something greater. I felt like I've had a purpose. I That's felt incredible. Like, yeah, like that's I've taken want. it and have had very spiritual experiences, but I also have already had those experiences. So I don't necessarily feel like I have to live in that space mm, yeah. of like, Oh, I got to get back there. You know what I mean? Like every yeah. once in a while, like a shrimp trip. Sure. But like, am I going to live in that space of like, this is my lifestyle? No, because I have to live in reality. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know every time I take them, it's such like a dark. I remember one time I took shrooms and I thought my friends fell asleep. And I was, I thought, I like convinced myself that I killed them. And I was just like, <gasps> no, that's horrible. At them, was horrible. And I was like, <laughs> no, they're dead. It's my fault. I remember like laying in my bed and I was like, this is me now. I'm going to die in this crack house. No. And, like, there, it was just, it was Why awful. did you think you killed them? I don't fucking know. So I you spent died. the I night thinking you were a murderer? I spent the night thinking that my friends were dead, that I had something to do with it, that I was going to s- live like in my... It's like the show dis- You. Oh, it was Did horrible. You watch that? No. Yeah. Everyone's wa- my season? dad's watching it. Oh, I didn't watch it though. Yeah. My dad said season. to watch it. It's I've wild. heard mixed things. Isn't Dalia it's in it? It's entertaining. Yeah, he's yeah, in the second he's season. He's in it. It's funny. Henderson? Yeah, he plays <laughs> a pedophile. <laughs> he does? Yeah, yeah, you gotta watch it. He kind of... Ha- I, I, I feel like I could <laughs> see that casting wise because he, he has like he cast as a pedophile in a he has like an interesting kind of he alcohol. has like a sneaky look <laughs> like a little sneak, little a sneak. yeah wait so what happened with the vaginas on goop Ooh. okay so you gotta watch it 
I don't I'm like. Gonna, the I'm word gonna vagina. watch it tonight. I should post they it. show like they show yeah, different vaginas. There's like this lady who's like a sex coach. You gotta just watch it. And oh my god, I'm so is excited. Is it people showing them? Like, I showed look it to at- my mom, and she was like, "Sarah, I oh, you just can't look at this." I would feel weird was, watching that with my mom. I tried. I was like, I was like, really? Me it's too. it's normalizing it. Like it is. It, mm. It's like. It's interesting. Our moms though, are not ready. They're, They're like, not ready for any old. Okay, well, no. f- while we're here, yeah, Taylor Swift doc. I haven't watched it. What? Watch it. it was I'm surprised you haven't watched it. Really? I, I feels like up your alley. You no, because no, like ta- okay, well, you will become one. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't either. Is I, it on Netflix. Yeah, yes. it, it, was, okay. it was really it. good. <laughs> Sarah texted me that it was unreal. Um, <laughs> I did. <laughs> I was like, it was good. Unreal. It was good. And then I go, okay, fine, lol. It was good. <laughs> but what I really liked about it, and what I really took away from it, was like she's a very positive person. And she has a really good head on her shoulders. She's a very hard worker. And I love like when she was in the studio working on a song, reading her lyrics to her producer and they were like, you know, working on a song together. She wasn't like, I don't know. What do you think about this? Like, what do you think about this song? Like, like, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. She wasn't insecure. She was like, I'm reading the lyrics and they're so good. And like, I love what I think. Like, that was like her vibe. And like, yeah, it was just like, oh, like that. I don't know. There's just something so attractive about that. That you can like you can convince people that what you do is good. Like it she, wasn't wasn't even, she didn't like doubt herself. Right. Yeah. I'm the opposite where I'm like, me too. I don't know, everybody just tell me like it was bad. Right. Cause like, I feel like it's bad. I don't know. Like, yeah. I, always, I was like, if I did her job, I would be like, what do you think about this? Like I could see myself saying that. So yeah. like to see her just being like this and this and this and like, just like feeling herself and like, sh- you know, he has we no choice. That, it's really yeah. good. Like, and she's also like, it's like very empowering. She's very career focused. Mm-hmm. She shows Extremely. how she deals with different types of like stressful situations and like h- her resilience, I would say. Yeah. Overall. Like it, it was really inspiring and like going into it, I was like, okay, Taylor Swift, like, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> like, <ugh>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, I'd rather choke on a dick than watch Taylor Swift. And I then feel I like watch. I'm really it. good at that. <laughs> <laughs> the little too. I do ADR me. on porn shoots of that. You did? Uh, no, you could. I know. I was like, oh, yeah. uh. <laughs> no. All right, we're disgusting. I know. Sorry. Um, did you guys watch the Justin my Bieber one? Gonna run no. Out. Did I, you? I know, but I heard that one's good. Too. Oh shit! Wait, did you watch the Lady Gaga one? Yeah, I didn't love it. Wait, you know what was so funny is when she took her top off. <laughs> did you see that? No, I didn't. She's I poolside. Just, she was too much for me. She's poolside having a professional meeting, and then she just takes her top off. I don't even remember that because I started watching no. it and it was what? yeah and it was and and everyone was just like um so next Thursday and like it was just like but it, it was such we a get power it, move. Lady Gaga. We fucking, yeah. It was a power move. Yeah, it we like that. Um, I didn't. I don't. I didn't love that doc. I liked it. I was just like felt like she was whining a lot. Yeah. I like musician docs because I don't really like know what their life is like. So it's kind of interesting to watch. And I was like T Swift when she was at her piano. I was like, yeah, bitch, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Oh my god, I can't wait to watch that in the goop. Yeah, that's yeah, a good you got one. To. Um. All right. Great. What do you think? So much fun. We did it. I, I would you think we it. did it? I think we nailed it. We fucking nailed it. Felt like it. we just peaked. So like maybe end here. Yeah. Great. We talk. Thank you guys so much for coming on. <laughs> Thank um, you for having tell us. us. Tell us where we can follow you and watch your shit. Where are we looking? Where's the camera? Right there. Oh. Straight ahead. So Not that one. This, this one? one. Oh, okay. Direct in front. Right in front. Hi. Hi. You can follow me at Princess Shank on Instagram, Twitter for show dates. Subscribe to my podcast, Shank, S H E N K. It's on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Sarah Wine Shank. Thank and you. next week. And next week, uh, when does this come out? Oh. Uh, well, they'll catch up and look it up on YouTube. Oh, Lights Out with David Spade. Oh, my God. Woo! Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank that's you. so sick. Right? Oh, on the panel. panel. Yes. This princess. Same puss. That's my puss. That's my puss. You know? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we have the same pussy. We have the same pussy. How fun. Uh, <laughs> How fun. Have fun. Have fun with your fucking pussy. <laughs> you, you can hang. Okay. I can hang. <laughs> <laughs> and Gabby, I do hang. Gabby, where do we um, find you? Uh, Instagram, Gabby Lamy, G A B B Y L A M B Y. Twitter, uh, you know what? I'm on there. Not great, but you know we're growing. No, you're good on Twitter. We're growing. Yeah, we're you growing. got some fire tweets. And your stories we're- are so funny. We always trade them back and forth. Yeah. We send the, the playing of the. Uh, that's when our you favorite. Play the oh, my it's so funny. We've got two months left with her. <sighs> 
lo- you should up the content with her up right yeah, up yeah. The content. <laughs> and i'm looking for a feed post of that okay i, I have one <laughs> yeah. there's one in there but i'll do another one yeah we need another yeah yeah all does right. she have a name the breathalyzer oh god no she doesn't okay but we, i can come up with one i th- just throwing it out there. You do, you do what you want. My you head's know? saying Felicity, but that's strange. Felicity's nice. No, it's not. Felicity? Like it. Okay. Felicity? <laughs> Felicity, my breath. I was like, desperate. I was like, okay. <laughs> you really were. She's like, okay, you're okay. scared. <laughs> you're like, I you love it. <laughs> and um, thank you guys so much for listening. Bye. 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 Pussy.